On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Once upon a time, this was a single country known as Rhodesia. Today, it lies divided by a national boundary. Zimbabwe was initially southern Rhodesia and lies to the south of Victoria Falls along the river Zambezi. Zambia was initially northern Rhodesia and lies on the other bank of the river. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country in the southeast of Africa. Its southern border is with the country of South Africa. According to archaeologists, the earliest records indicate that first human settlements in this area reach back to the third century. Welcome to Zimbabwe, a country that could have been a real paradise had it not been for a single man, the dictator Robert Mugabe. He celebrated his 88th birthday this year and has ruled Zimbabwe for 32 years. For decades, Zimbabwe has served the African continent as the main supplier of wheat. Today, as a result of Mugabe's rule, four out of five people are unemployed and starvation is commonplace. Among other things, Mugabe confiscated the land of white farmers and divided it among people whose loyalty he could depend on but who were, at the same time, not up to the job. Few other African countries enjoy such an abundance of natural wealth. Zimbabwe is rich in gold, coal, chromium, silicon, and nickel. Over 12 million people live in Zimbabwe, most of them native Africans. Many white people used to live here as well, and most lived here in 1975 when they formed 5% of the total population. Today, this number is negligible. 80% of the inhabitants are the Shona people. The second largest ethnic group is the Ndebele people, living mostly in Matabele land in the western part of the country. They conquered the Matabele land plains in the 1830s. Until then, this area was inhabited by the Sana people, otherwise known as Bushmen. Zimbabwe ranks high in some pretty sad statistics. Life expectancy, for example, has been reduced from 61 to 34 over the last 20 years. The Matobo mountain range is the spiritual heart of Zimbabwe. Matobo stands for Bold Head. It is a place where many battles and reconciliations took place.
The caves found in the Motobo Mountains hide many mysterious wall paintings depicting hunting scenes. Some are as old as 10,000 years. Human remains and prehistoric tools reaching back 35,000 years were also discovered in these caves. Cecil John Rhodes, a British entrepreneur, after whom the country was initially named Rhodesia, has his tomb atop this mountain range. Zimbabwe's main crop is maize. Similarly, as Europe was once saved by American potatoes many centuries ago, Zimbabwe is kept afloat thanks to maize, also originally from America. Mr. Matuta's motor mill is an important venue for villagers from near and far who grow corn on their meager plots. They come bearing sacks of the crop, and the mill's employees rapidly turn it into the much desired maize flour. The old and worn machine makes the job rather risky. Fingers are constantly in danger of being chopped off. The flour grinding process always attracts curious onlookers. The owners, on the other hand, prefer a nap in the shade. The flour is ready and the pleased owner heads home. Means of transportation is directly linked to the state of the wallet. Sadza is Zimbabwe's national dish. It is a thick maize puree. In slightly varying forms, it's the staple food of more than half of the African continent. Mrs. Constance Matuto prepares some in her clay kitchen. When seasoned with a little oil and spices, it makes for a tasty and nourishing meal. Cutlery is nowhere to be seen, but the crockery is lovely. The future of 21st century Africa is directly dependent on factors that have long been taken for granted on other continents. Enough quality schools to ensure education and adequate supply of water, respectively. Water is abundant in Zimbabwe, particularly during the rainy season. Drinking water, however, remains scarce. It is fetched from wells that are few and far between. The situation is made significantly worse during the dry season when sources dry out. Bad times set in for all living creatures, people, cattle, and wild animals alike. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The locals make decisions that may seem unusual to us. One such measure is making use of the so-called rain whisperer. Fitting equipment is required for the job in the form of a magic staff, black skirt, and a hat made from monkey and civet hide. The sacred ceremony in one of the mysterious Nyelele mountain caves in the Matabele mountains is out of reach to whites who are believed to have transparent ears and could not hear God's voice in any case. 
Tumbo Mabui. It seems that God has been merciful, just like every year at the onset of the rainy season. After all, who cares whether the rain was brought by nature or by supernatural forces? What matters is that it is raining, and hard. The rain has ceased. There is a rainbow, and the endless pastures of the Hwangi National Park are lush and green. Ostriches stroll peacefully, using their sharp vision to spot predators lurking in the tall grass. Evil tongues claim that an ostrich has a larger eye than brain. So what? It doesn't seem to bother him. The African bush is overflowing with life. Animals gather to drink each evening at natural water holes. The juiciest and sweetest grass lines the water holes. Many lovely plants and trees are in bloom. Acacias, sturdy baobabs, as well as healing kegelias. The locals claim that the fruits of the bush cure just about everything. diversity of life here highlights the intricacy of the ecosystem and the importance of every animal. This is the time to slow down and really look around. Many animal species that normally have little in common are united by the need to protect themselves on the open plains. For this reason, ostriches, zebras, and wildebeests are seen here living as one. The arrangement is mutually beneficial. Some have better vision, while others have better hearing, and as such, together they have a better chance of spotting approaching danger. There is power in numbers. Wildebeests are truly remarkable creatures. It's almost as if God had a few bits left over when creating the animal kingdom and used those bits to create a half horse, half cow as a prank. In other words, the wildebeest. In reality, wildebeests are relatives of the antelope in the Bovidae family. The tallest land animal, the giraffe, also lives in the Huangue Park. The males reach a respectable height of 5.5 meters and weigh around a ton. Arabian merchants once graced the giraffe with the name Zarafa, meaning the one that walks fast. Its Latin name, Giraffa camelopardalis, is a reminder of the mistaken idea that it was a cross between a camel and a leopard. The giraffe's height provides it with a remarkable view and enables it to feed on vegetation inaccessible to other species. In everyday life, though, this height presents a complication. Even such mundane feats as quenching thirst entail a complicated operation. Due to their height, giraffes must regulate their blood pressure to prevent brain damage when lowering their heads. Pride of the Huangue National Park is the rhino. According to one of the rangers, Godfrey Kanye, annually poachers in Zimbabwe kill tens of rhinos. Although it seems to be a silly superstition, powder made from the rhino horn is still used today in traditional Asian medicine as a potent aphrodisiac. There are 
rhinoceros, together with the elephant, rank among Africa's mightiest animals. In Zimbabwe, as anywhere else in the world, the lion is the ruler of the animal kingdom. This pride of four lionesses and four playful cubs are resting peacefully having had their days fill. A curiosity is an electronic collar worn by one of the lionesses, which enables scientists to monitor the movement of this pride while in the bush. Alongside its wildlife, Zimbabwe has many other attractions. With Zambia, it shares a world rarity. In the Ndebele tongue, it is called Amanza Tunkayo, meaning water falling upwards. Such a unique sight is to be seen in Victoria Falls. The waterfall was discovered in 1855 by a Scottish traveler and missionary, David Livingstone, who proclaimed that such a stunning sight is certainly admired by angels as they fly overhead. The waterfall was named in honor of the Queen of England, Victoria. On its way toward the Indian Ocean, the 1,700-meter-wide Zambezi River suddenly drops into a 100-meter depth. The spray is propelled through the canyon as if driven by a huge fan, and thus the effect of rising water is created. During the rainy season, when 10,000 cubic meters per second flow through the river, the spray reaches 500 meters high. The wild rapids on the river Zambezi are tamed by the massive Kariba Dam built at the end of the Batoka Pass. The dam has been essential to the development of the mining industry, which requires substantial amounts of electrical energy. On the other hand, the dam has driven out the Tonga tribe, who inhabited the river's banks and lived off fishing. Long gone are the romantic times when hydroplanes were the only means of travel from England to southern Africa. Today, there are much more prosaic means of transportation across Zimbabwe. The bravest of the wildlife admirers may wish to encounter Africa's deadliest animal, the hippo. There are up to 20 hippos in a single bay. The hippopotamus, although a vegetarian and apparently clumsy, 
is capable of decent acceleration. Hippos are territorial and can be driven to furious rage when their habitat is compromised. The locals claim that whoever crosses a hippo's path seldom gets away alive. As this bad-tempered specimen clearly demonstrates, the hippo is well equipped to bite an uninvited intruder in half. No need to test all theories, surely. A storm is headed our way. During the rainy season, it rains more or less nonstop for almost a hundred days. The storms irrigate the scorched land and dried out riverbeds, as well as water levels and lakes, rise by several meters. There is no need for wildlife to migrate all the way to water holes, and so the already slow rhythm of life slows down even more. These little hunters have caught meat for lunch in the form of some unappetizing looking frogs. The housewives blanch the frogs alive. Then they are cleaned, gutted, and slow cooked in brine until tender. It makes for an unattractive dish, but one that would probably work well in a French restaurant. Waiting for the meat to cook is the perfect opportunity to tell stories. Story and fable telling skill is an art form in Africa, as is dancing and singing. Mrs. Bongi Nakonda recounts the story of a jackal and a crow for the children. It is the equivalent of the fable about the cunning fox that stole a bit of cheese from the mad crow, only here, in Africa, there is a jackal instead of a fox and a chunk of meat instead of cheese. The frogs are done, and everyone awaits a piece of the delicacy. Lack of foodstuffs is a problem in Zimbabwe. The people in the famine-stricken areas, and the children in particular, are dependent on foreign aid. These kids count among the luckier ones. Zimbabwe, a beautiful and naturally wealthy country with enchanting nature on the surface and immeasurable mineral wealth beneath the surface, made poor by a man. People die of starvation here. Let us pray that this splendid part of Africa has happier times and wiser rulers in store for it. Lisa Lekule, Zimbabwe. Farewell. <laughs>